my name is Sharon Park and I go to Parsons School of Design. My major is fashion design. So I just finished my freshman year at Parsons and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I met a lot of very different people from <laughs> different backgrounds because there's so many international kids there. And as people told me, the curriculum was pretty difficult. There was a lot of work. It was more like, instead of each individual piece being hard or each project being hard, it was more like they had a lot of work given to you. I guess if you stay on top of it and you don't get caught behind and you don't skip classes, then it's really enjoyable, I would say. For coming to Ashcan, I came when I was 16, and so it was a really, really big transitional period. I came from Texas and adjusting from Texas to New York was really difficult. It played a really big part in my portfolio. And I also never had any kind of art background. I, I took like a couple art classes in high school and elementary school, but that's about all the art education that I had. And so Ashcan was kind of helping me build on my <laughs> basics, but also at the same time helping build my portfolio. Because I never had any kind of art background in the past, it was really hard for me to be creative with my pieces. Um, so I kind of just focused on what I could focus on. And the way that I came up with ideas was I would kind of go back and forth with my teachers. We would play ideas off of each other, starting with something really basic. So maybe like creating a list of things that we like and dislike creating lists of, I don't know, emotions and stuff like that, and then we would choose a word and then play off of that and kind of um, just throw words back and forth at each other until we came up with a good idea. I would start by sketching in a sketchbook. Um, sketchbooks really help because it makes ideas that are almost too open more concrete so that you know more so what you're doing and you can figure out the composition. So I'd make multiple sketches and then I would get started on my actual piece. It was like 12 to 15 pieces. I know you can use one piece as multiple pieces. If you want to photograph it differently or get different angles of it, you can um, use them as separate pieces. And you can also use sketchbook um, sketches, like anything in your sketchbook. Uh, anything that sh shows your thought process um, to fill up your portfolio and that's also good for the people looking through your portfolio to give them an idea of how you're thinking and give them more insight to your thought process and your work process and how it's different from others. So my first piece was called On Repeat and this was the piece that my Parsons challenge was inspired off of. It was a watercolor um, painting or more so multiple watercolor paintings that were compiled into one. And this was a representation of the life that I was living and as I said earlier, this was like a really big transitional um, phase for me because I was still a young teenager, still in high school and I was living by myself in New York. Like the paintings were different paintings of things that I did every day and I cut these paintings into circles to kind of represent kind of just like a never-ending cycle because it was I, I was stuck doing these things and I didn't like I didn't know anything else other than eat sleep exercise do schoolwork and come to Ashton. The Parsons challenge is essentially you take any piece that is in your portfolio and you create another piece. It can be inspired in any way. It can be inspired off of the medium or the subject of the piece, and you just create another piece um, off of that. <laughs> and then for my actual Parsons challenge, this was a wire um, 3D sculpture almost to play off of my watercolor painting, and I chose something that I did every day, um, which is come to Ashcan and work on my pieces. And I created a wire sculpture of myself and suspended it from the ceiling. I had it sitting down at my desk um, 
as if it was painting. And then I, yeah, attached LED rope light to some of the objects in the sculpture to highlight them. So yeah, that's what my personal challenge was. It didn't really, it didn't <laughs> have too much meaning other than just being a play off of um, my watercolor. And that one was very tedious and time consuming, but still very fun to do. And I wanted to experiment with different kinds of mediums with my portfolio because I know that Parsons tends to like seeing a variety of things rather than seeing you focus on just one thing. So instead of doing you know, 15 still lifes, I chose different things. 3D sculptures and um, acrylic paintings, watercolor paintings, um, pen, micron pen drawings, and so on. <laughs> This one is called Controlled Waves. It's a 3D paper sculpture. This one, I was inspired off of another piece that I did called Beneath the Waves. I wanted to take a different approach to the ocean. The ocean, I find when it's depicted in art pieces, it often represents like something to do with the depth of it or the darkness of it or how little we know of it. So I wanted to pick almost the opposite of that. And so I printed off big sheets of just water and I used a X-Acto knife to cut out the patterns in the water and then I attached them onto acrylic sticks um, to create this 3D piece. <laughs> um, the next one is Beneath the Waves. The idea came off of my past and this one specific friend that I had, she was a, a childhood friend and even now I would say even if I call her up, even though she lives in a different state, we still can talk to each other as if nothing had happened and I think that's because we went through a lot together. I wanted to capture our friendship somehow um, so I used brighter colors um, in this to represent our friendship. Even though we were both going through a lot, it was a very like happy, we were happy together all the time. So the next piece is called My Land Incarceration. This piece was one of the first acrylic pieces that I did, so this was still me <laughs> developing my acrylic painting skills. I guess I took inspiration from my current state, which was still that transitional period um, of it was a really difficult time um, for me to adjust and so I wanted to depict that somehow. And so I did this acrylic painting on raw muslin. I, I used myself as the subject and I encased myself within the muslin. And I used black and white to, yeah, as a playoff of how I felt. My life was not very colorful at that time. The other part of the painting was another on raw muslin of a rat trapped in a mouse trap. And it's just a mirror reflection of how I felt again. <laughs> My next piece is called Found Objects. This one is a still life and this is the first piece that I did. I put this one in my portfolio because Parsons likes to see a variety of different things. As they like to see your skill as, as well as um, your creativity. For this one, I use this as a, a compositional study. I didn't use any pencils in this. I wasn't allowed to use pencils. I used my con pens for this and I had to really think about the composition or where things were gonna go and how big they had to be on the page for me to fit everything. I went back over it with ink and watercolor to create more depth and interest. The next one was a box of strawberries. This is an acrylic painting. This was the first acrylic painting that I ever, ever did. I didn't really know what to do, and so again, I did the lists, and I chose an object, and it was strawberries. But for the painting, we thought it would be a little boring to just paint strawberries. We thought of ways to make it more interesting. We thought instead of filled with strawberries, we would actually paint a box of 
made of strawberries. For this piece, I actually have to glue together real strawberries and cut them into a cube and then photograph that and paint based off of that. It was pretty big. It was it was a decent size. It was really difficult to do. If you're like me and you struggle with creativity, it's always good to have um, something to look off of. So my next three art pieces were basically one piece, but I submitted them as three separate pieces. I thought that if I depicted this fish in its packaging over where the fish once would have swam, then um, maybe it would create more depth. <laughs> the next one, uh, steak on grass, is a depiction of steak in packaging over over a field of grass, which is where you know the cows would have been raised uh, before they were slaughtered and sold. And then the last one, human meat, is another watercolor. I wanted to do one of humans and I was thinking of how to connect this to the past to watercolors and so I painted myself encased in packaging and I made the background the sky because there's no one specific place that we dwell or um, are raised and so we're kind of just like the sky's the limit for us. The next one is Burning Bridge. This one was a 3D wood sculpture. I didn't do any kind of measurements or plan this. I, I just created it as I went. This one was inspired off of a bridge that I used to go to with my friends back home. This place was um, a place that held a lot of my memories and so I thought that it would be a good subject. One of like the full bridge, it's all intact, and then another picture of it a little bit burnt, and then another of it more burnt, and then one of it completely burnt. And as I burnt the bridge, I kind of rubbed the ashes all over my white clothing, and it was to represent kind of the burning of my innocence. <laughs> Since after I moved to New York, I had to grow up really quickly and I didn't get the last two years of what we would call our childhood of us still being reckless teenagers. I didn't get that and so that's what I was trying to show in this was um, the burning of my innocence. My last piece was my cocoon coat and my pleated skirt. Um, these two I put in my portfolio because I wanted to go into fashion design and so I thought that I should at least have one or two pieces that I made. For these pieces, I wanted to make very basic pieces. Two pieces of clothing I thought would be really simple and easy to make. They were not simple whatsoever. I spent a lot of time on these because I didn't know how to make clothing, so I kind of had to teach myself as well as learn from my peers and my teachers. The creative process for almost all my pieces because I I really struggled with the creative portion of creating art. I did the same thing with all of my other pieces where we would write down words and then choose a word and then um, I would kind of play off of my teacher and we would go back and forth with words and ideas and then create an idea based off of that. The ideas, there's so many things that I could have chosen and I was pretty unconfident with my own ideas and so I, I was really insecure about bringing up my ideas with the teachers and discussing my own ideas and so making these lists really helped me be less insecure about them because, I don't know, it was more like I was choosing from a list that I created instead of choosing from anything in my own mind. Which ultimately, yes, the words came from my own mind and they were my own ideas, but it was e a lot easier to choose from a piece of paper that had a bunch of words on it rather than just Research is always important. I always made sure that I had reference photos because it's always easiest to do things based off of referencing and any painting or drawing is purely um, a play on 
how good you are at observing objects. I found out that I was interested in fashion design because I used to be a figure skater and I couldn't afford the sport almost. It's a really expensive sport and so whenever it would be competition season, I couldn't afford the dresses because they're customized dresses um, and they would cost a thousand to two thousand dollars and that's a lot for one dress. My mom thought that since I learned how to quilt in elementary school that I could make my own dresses. It was really difficult but I actually found that time went by really really quickly when I was working on these dresses. It was very enjoyable for me. It wasn't something that I dreaded, it was something that I woke up looking forward to. Me knowing that I wanted to do something within the creative field, I took this as kind of like my calling <laughs> to do fashion design. But what I hope to do after school, hopefully I will be able to have my own business and design my own clothing or accessories or whatever I choose to do. I haven't chosen my specific study yet. I am doing fashion design, but that's just a a broad name for what you can actually do. You can go into women's wear, men's wear, accessory design. So this was my portfolio. I hope this was insightful and was enough information for you to create your own portfolio. And I'm really excited to start my second year at Parsons School of Design. Thank you for watching. Subscribe below to stay updated and for more tips on how to make a great art portfolio.